Okay, so uh, uh, this is about strict convexity huh? and the connection. With uniform convexity, okay. Clearly, uh, as I claimed last time, uniform convexity implies strict convexity. But let, let's go back to the definition, okay? So we say that X Banach is strictly convex if and only if there exists uh, for any for any x and y vectors such that the norm of x plus y equals the norm of x plus norm of y, then they are proportional for alpha positive. Because if they are uh, proportional, if they are uh, parallel x equal alpha y, then this, this inequality is obvious, with alpha positive, of course, in the same direction as vectors. Okay? And we have seen, uh, I have proved, first of all, we can assume that x and y are both non equal to zero, because if one of them is equal to zero, this uh, uh, norm of x plus y here is obvious. And uh, uh, we have seen that this is equivalent to say that uh, if uh, x and y are in x is the same. Huh? This, this, and this are the same, uh, such that uh, norm of x equals norm of y equals to 1, and norm of x plus y is equal to 2, then x is equal to y. Then x is equal to y. Okay, it's exactly the same. Okay, they have the same norm normal. So I, I have proved this. If you remember, we introduced this function. It's one of the recording. The idea here is uh, to divide by the norm of the biggest of the two, and then introduce a function phi of t and t of t and so on and so forth, convexity, etc. Et so I did this technical proof before. So uh, this is the one I'm going to be focusing on. This one here. Okay. So the condition norm of x plus y equals 2, okay, means that the norm of x plus y over 2 is equal to 1. And in fact, that proof will show that if you have x and y, this condition means if you take the middle point, if the middle point is in the, in the surface, norm 1, in fact, the whole segment, okay, has norm 1, okay, again, by convexity and so on and so forth. What happened here? I raised something. Looks like <laughs> something is happening with this. Uh, okay, so here, here, and if you take the middle point, this is x plus y over 2, then if the x plus y over 2 has norm 1, the entire segment. Oh, interesting. I did not know this. So the entire segment will have norm 1. OK? So here meaning that this will imply that the norm of alpha x plus beta y is equal to 1 whenever alpha plus beta is equal to 1, alpha positive, beta positive. So the entire segment will be on the surface. OK? So that's, that's what it means uh, to be strictly convex. You cannot find the segment on the surface of the unit ball, or any ball, in fact, as a matter of fact, any ball. OK. So why is it uh, equivalent to uh, uh, uniform convexity? So assume, assume x is different from y. So in, in other words, assume it's not uniformly convex. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, norm of x equals to 1 equals to norm of y. Okay, so we want to show that norm of x plus y over 2 is not equal to 1. Okay, but then set epsilon to be the norm of x minus y, which is positive. Why? Because x is different from y. And this will tell us that the norm of x plus y over 2 is less or equal than 1 minus delta of epsilon, which is less than 1. So x plus y over 2 cannot ha be on the surface of the unit, so 
x is strictly convex. Okay? Great. Um, yesterday, I was looking at something and they, uh, the last few days, and they came up with uh, a new property. Huh? So, in the same remark here, I called it like uniform strict convexity. Huh? Uniform strict convexity. Okay? And what it says, it says the following. So, assume you have now the same property, the one I, I described above, but for sequences. Huh? So, you are assuming that xn less than 1, yn, excuse me one second, and the uh, norm of yn less than 1, and I assume that the limit of the norm of xn plus yn over 2 is equal to 1. So we know that, uh, so these are vectors in the unit ball, sequence, two sequences, such that the middle goes to 1. And what I want is uh, that we cannot have x equal y for the strict convexity. So here, then, so if you have this, then, so this is if, then limit of xn minus yn when n goes to infinity is equal to 0. So the xn's and yn's are getting closer and closer to 0. So you see, it's the same definition as strict convexity, but for sequences, OK, for sequences. In this case, one can easily prove that if you have this property, then x is uniformly convex. OK? In fact, we can prove that uh, we can prove more than this. We can prove if and only if S is uniform convex. So this uniform strict convexity and the traditional uniform convexity are the same for sequences here or for the delta epsilon at the point, OK? Uh, this, this would be a wonderful exercise to prove. Just a remark here that uh, a remark here, the norm of xn plus yn over 2, this is less than 1 half the norm of xn plus the norm of yn. And since both of them are less or equal than 1, this is less than 1 plus 1 over 2, and that's 1. And then, therefore, lim inf of xn plus yn over 2 is going to be less than 1 half lim inf of norm of xn plus lim inf of norm of yn. OK? And this is less or equal than 1. Now, the lim inf of xn plus yn over 2 this is equal to 1 because the sequence, the limit of the sequence is 1. And since the lim inf, so you, you will get, I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot. One second, one second. Lim sup, here you put 1 half lim sup of xn, lim sup of yn. And uh, this is less or equal than 1. So you will show that the lim inf equal lim sup equal 1. Well, therefore, lim of the norm of xn equal lim of the norm of yn equal to 1. So basically, the condition that the middle point, if you are in the unit ball and the middle point goes to 1, then it forces all the, the vectors, the limit of the sequences xn and yn to go to 1. OK? So this condition sometimes is very powerful. OK? It's really powerful here, these conditions. So we, I call that, on the sequences, uniform strict convexity. Huh? So instead of having the strict convexity for two vectors, you have it for sequences. OK? Uh, this is very useful. Uh, in applications when we want to try, for example, to prove uh, that the minimizing sequence of some functionals uh, converges and so on and so forth. So, so it's good to know. Um, 
last time, so I want to go back to the last lecture. Okay, so the last time we proved the following. Yeah, I think that's the last part I did. That uh, theorem: if x is uniformly convex, okay, if x is uniformly convex, and Cn is a family or sequence or countable family of bounded closed convex non empty subsets of X such that C n plus one is in C n, then the intersection of the C n's is not empty. Okay? So this is what we call the property R. Okay? So if X is uniformly convex, then you have this intersection property, okay, for bound closed convex subsets which are decreasing. Okay? And I showed you that if you have property R, you are complete, you are a Banach space, okay? So here of course if X is uniformly convex and Banach, I'm sorry, I forgot here. If X is from the convex Banach space. Be careful, now you can be in the the convex and you don't have to be a Banach space. I'm thinking about uh, inner product spaces like Hilbert spaces, but not complete ones, okay? So they are in the convex, but they are not, uh, but they are not uh, uh, complete, okay? And they are in the convex. So if you have property R, you must be a Banach space, okay? For the case of uh, uh, this, pro this property, in fact, in, uh, we are going to show that we are uh, uh, reflexive at the end, uh, the main result. And what's interesting is that uh, uh, that uh, it's countable. So, but if you go, for example, in the linear case, right? in the linear case, this will give us uh, uh, reflexivity. And uh, since the closed convex sets are are uh, uh, closed for the weak topology, and the weak topology will be compact, and therefore you have it for any family. What's interesting is that when you are in hyperbolic metric spaces, hyperbolic metric spaces, or modular function spaces, Okay, then it's not true that property R implies that the weak topology is compact. Well, so we don't have a weak topology. In both cases, hyperbolic metric spaces and modular function spaces, we don't have uh, a topology uh, for which these closed convex sets are closed. And in, for that reason, for that reason, I mean, not closed, that it's going to be compact in other words. So, so, so uh, for that reason here, uh, the only result we have above is countable, is a countable intersection property. And this problem, we struggled with it many times in the past. I, I, I personally struggled with it, okay? So, uh, you have countable and you don't have for any family, basically. You don't have an intersection property for any family, which a topology will give us, okay? Which a topology will definitely give us. So let, let us prove now uh, a, a theorem, a beautiful theorem. theorem. I mean, I, I don't need it in this setting, uh, as I said, because I can go through the weak topology. But I want to give it to you because the proof is quite, can be adapted to the case of hyperbolic metric spaces and modular function spaces. And uh, I believe, if I'm not wrong, in the hyperbolic metric spaces, it was proved before in a paper with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Han and uh, Tohesh, but in the case of uh, modular function spaces, this, is, this result is not known, okay? This result is not known. So anyway, so here is the theorem. So let x be Banach space, which is 
uniformly convex. Okay, and uh, let C alpha, alpha and gamma, be a collection, a family of a closed non empty uh, convex subsets of X such that okay okay such that uh, there exists X zero in X the soup of the distance from X zero to C alpha is finite so, so remember, uh, either we have bounded, okay, so we can assume that they are all bounded.